When I lived in California, it was really easy to take my culture for granted because it was everywhere. And when I moved to Boston and just had no one to talk to that was Filipino and no food to eat that was Filipino unless I made it, um, I realized how much I missed it. Does anyone feel good about chopping liver? <laughs> Especially in American cooking, maybe it's not so much something you really want to eat in terms of how it's prepared. There's a certain sauce called manco mas, um, and it, it's built as an all-purpose sauce because really, like once you have it, you'll want to put it on everything. Um, I'm Elliot Tiglao. I live in Somerville, Massachusetts, and I run a Filipino food pop-up called Pamangan. I actually grew up in California. I moved out here about six years ago, um, but I spent my early years in Pampanga, kind of northwest of Manila, the capital. We have been known as kind of like the big house in our barrio, and our doors are always open during, during meal time. So people come in um, during breakfast, lunch, or dinner, and it's kind of just expected that people from the neighborhood will pop in and have a bite to eat if they are hungry. My family actually has um, a farm in the Philippines and we have lots of mango trees. This is kind of all I eat when I'm there. It's kind of the reason why me and my brother like to do this together because my dad's a chef and um, he had us in the kitchen working on different things since as long as I can remember. Um, there we go. Yes. Oh my Good God. Job. That's cool. You did it. When you try to make an R, you put your tongue up against the roof of your mouth. So, okay. I don't know, it's a thing. I, I can find a better word to help you pronounce an NG sound, but you already got it, so maybe I don't need to give you that word. In New England, there really isn't a lot of Filipino food. Um, and actually, in general, it's, it's hard to create food that is 100% authentic because of the way that people eat here. Um, there are just certain tastes that they might have. Because this project is also a lot about cultural advocacy and preservation, there's some part of that that feels really difficult. Um, but I think it's important to acknowledge it and tell people at least, like, we're not doing it this way because this is the reaction that we get. I have described Filipino food to other people as the southern food of Southeast Asia. Unless you burn things, even then, it's like, it still tastes good because it's deep fried. Um, I think a lot of foods in Southeast Asia tend to be really clean and clean tasting, I guess, so it's very fresh and there's certainly lots of elements to Filipino food that is that way, but Filipinos really enjoy richness of flavor, trying to bring together different flavors that might not necessarily be normal, quote unquote. I remember when I was young, I was maybe like in first or second grade, I had brought this dish that I really enjoy um, called adobong pusit. It's basically a squid dish and it looks, it's squid, you know, it has tentacles and everything. I think for people who, you know, might bring a sandwich to school, that's a little weird to them. And, but for me, that was something I really enjoyed and I was really excited to have that for lunch. When I was sitting down to have it, someone had come up and asked, what is that? And I, all I did was show them and it freaked them out so much that they knocked it out of my hand. And one, I was really disappointed and upset that this person had knocked it out of my hand and run away. But the other piece was that my, my teacher came by and all she saw was this mess and she chided me for it and told me to clean it up. And I was just like, why is this happening to me? This is why I don't talk to people. I think as a person of color who's maybe eating foods that people think aren't, aren't super savory, you learn to 
kind of hide your food because you know that people are going to react to it in a certain way. It's, it's such a weird thing because you, you experience this sort of distaste for what you like to eat um, all your life and then all of a sudden someone discovers your food and it's thought of in a new way because it's coming from someone that people trust to know what good food is while you have these people who've been eating this food for centuries and they know what good food is that's why they're eating it <laughs> on one hand um, for a long time I think people have approached food from a place that is kind of like not thinking about where it's come from but I think especially around here it feels hopeful that people are thinking at least as far as where did my food come from and who's making my food because decades ago people would just come into a restaurant and not know anything about the people in the back. It makes me hopeful that maybe one day um, there'll be an interest, like a real earnest interest in foods that are exactly the way that um, a certain people have it.